When it comes to expressing one's creativity, people often pursue activities like drawing or writing or a lackluster combination of the two. But those of us with a more chaotic alignment express ourselves in other ways. Jimmy, why don't you draw me your favorite thing you did this summer? Hmm, by catapulting corpses into the besieged city walls, not only would we be disposing of our dead, but we'd be spreading fear and disease amongst the enemy's ranks at the same time! Two birds with one stone, mother! You need to stop spending time with the neighbor boy. As Dieter F. Uchtdorf once said, the desire to create is one of the deepest yearnings of the human soul. And so is murder. So while humans have been battling for thousands of years, it's only natural that we've also sought more unique ways of getting those dubs. So today, we're going to explore some of my favorite military tactics used in history. The SMS Cap Trafalgar was a German civilian ocean liner that was repurposed into a warship for World War I. Converting ocean liners to troop transport or medical ships was common, but fitting them for war was kind of like giving a kid a gun. Sure, a child soldier can produce the same stopping power as your average GI, but let's just say Rambo would have been a much shorter movie if he was mowing down toddlers instead of Burmese soldiers. The Cap Trafalgar was tasked with taking on British merchant ships off the coast of South America, and to do this, they came up with a unique strategy. Using some newspaper pictures they found, they disguised their ship as the British ocean liner, the RMS Carmania, and used the ruse to sneak up on merchant vessels. The newly disguised Cap Trafalgar set off on its first voyage, feeling all cheeky, and soon encountered its first victim. Well, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> Dialing the clock back a few hundred years, we have the probably fictitious, but I'm still going to include it because fuck it, story of the town of Rotenberg ob der Tauber in Germany. During the Thirty Years' War, the Catholic army wanted to destroy the town because they resisted the church. We have come in the name of God! You are now saved! The town council attempted to change the Count of Tilly's mind with a gift of local wine, three and a quarter liters worth. The Count declared that if anyone could drink the lot of it in one sitting, he would spare the town. So the councilman gave it to their mayor, who proceeded to abuse his liver more than an Olympic gymnastics team. Uh, by God, you've done it! You've saved the town! <coughs> I did what now? As we have all learned from the renowned American philosopher, Bob the Builder, having the right tools can fix any problem. Leaky faucet? Have a wrench handy. Clog toilet? Use a plunger. Will to live? And of course, nothing quite solves the problem of pesky British shipping like a German U-boat. These tin cans of death were responsible for the sinking of 10 million tons of shipping over the course of World War I, with the most successful commanders holding records to this day. But the British were like, we're all so then, and decided to come up with a plan to counter these sneaky little buggers. <laughs> and boy, did they have some ideas. Okay, welcome team. As you all know, you have been gathered here today due to your outstanding military expertise to address the pressing issue of German U-boat operation throughout the open blue. These kraut underwater vehicles have been terrorizing our supply lines for too long, and the Crown will have none of it. Now, gentlemen, let's hear some of your ideas, and remember, there are no stupid answers. How about we have men go out on boats, and when they see a periscope, one throws a bag over it while the other hammers it as hard as they can. I say we send Britain's finest swimmers with sharp hammers to whale away at the U-boats and send them to the depths. Why don't we use our birds and sea lions? More specifically, train them to chase periscopes and identify U-boats. <laughs> shit on the periscopes! Train seagulls to shit on the periscopes and force them to surface! Let's just fucking paint the ocean! Just all of it! So when the periscope comes up, it's blinded by the paint! I stand corrected. You may think I'm joking, but they actually went through with some of these plans. Radios were well developed by the time World War II came around, but Germans had the annoying habit of listening into Allied transmissions. Hey, can you guys like stop listening into our transmissions, please? Or we'll have to take action. Haha, <laughs> oh yeah, you and what pigeons. Allies turned to the tried but true method of using homing pigeons to help deliver sensitive material. The plan was to parachute the pigeons into France with instructions for the locals on how to use them to deliver intel across the English Channel. And if you're wondering how exactly one goes about parachuting pigeons into a war zone, Pfft, when you stupid, the answer is lingerie. Or more specifically, the lingerie company made in form. That's right, the Allies hired a lingerie company to spice up their production, shifting from making corsets and bras to pigeon parachutes and vests. Unfortunately, this tactic led to many deaths, as pigeons that landed unseen by locals would be trapped in a strafe jacket of sexy pigeon lingerie. So another method was devised, where this time, pigeons would be strapped to the chest of a paratrooper and were kept alive by the power of friendship. When the supply of pigeon corsets ran out, paratroopers would just stuff the little guys in their socks, cutting a hole for 
for them to peek their heads out of. Cut a few more for the wings and boom, you got yourself some flying shoes. Compared to the rest of these stories, this strategy was by far the most effective, with an estimated 95% message delivery rate due to homing pigeons' uncanny knack for finding their way home. Not so much Blue Jays, though. But you can prove them wrong any day now, Dad. So, in conclusion, while military masterminds have devised some of history's most effective strategies, such as the Greek Trojan Horse or the Soviet defense of Stalingrad, you should hide your pet from the next RTC kid to come across, because it's only a matter of time before Frederick II straps a bra on your Siberian husky and ships him off to Afghanistan. Seven and stars.